Hey guys, today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about hand cut blanks. They are a blank for you to stamp on that has been cut by hand using a jeweler's saw. So I'm going to insert a picture here of what kind of saw I'm talking about. When someone is creating a hand cut stamping blank, it takes a good deal of time, it takes some practice, it takes skill, it takes investment in the equipment, and so you do pay extra for these kinds of blanks. Hand cut blanks are just created in a completely different manner that takes a lot of time and practice and skill. These are, these are blanks that I paid for. These two are some that I did myself. I did this one yesterday for this video, as a matter of fact. Hand cut blanks are going to cost more per blank than a die cut blank because they do take a lot more time to create. For now, let's get on with the show and start stamping this little guy or girl. I don't know. It's going to be a crazy goat lady uh, keychain. So in order to make this, we're gonna need all the usual suspects. We're gonna need our bench block. On my bench block, I have some duct tape so that the back of my blank doesn't get scratched up. I have my hammer. This one has a brass head so that it preserves the longevity of my stamps. I have a pair of pliers for when I am ready to put the bale on here. I have my power punch. You can use a screw down hole punch if you want to. I have my key ring and I do not like using jump rings for keychains because keychains tend to get caught on things, right? You're chucking it in your purse or with your wallet or just whatever. And this can get caught on something and, and the force of pulling on it can uh, open that jump ring and pull it off of the key ring. So I like to use pinch bales. Uh, okay, here's a pinch bale. So I'll show you how that works after I'm done stamping, but this is a stainless steel pinch bale. And then of course I have my metal stamps, which I keep in my handy little ammunition boxes. You can get those at Cabela's or uh, Sportsman's Warehouse or wherever. Okay, so let's stick our little goatee -goat right here. I'm nervous about messing this up because I only have one blank. I'm gonna grab some tape here. Okay, if you have watched me for any length of time, you know I am a taping kind of gal. So what I'm gonna do is just carefully kind of plot this out as I go. So I use my left hand to hold the blanks and then I strike it with my right hand. So I'm just gonna kind of get an idea of where this is gonna be. So I'm looking at the side here. Now let me zoom in with this other camera. Okay, I want this uh, image right here to see. I'm making sure that it's facing the right direction and I'm just gonna see how far down from the top of the goat's back this C is going to land if I do it right here. I feel like I need it up a little higher, so I'm gonna do that really quickly. Now with pencil, I put a little C on here, so that actually helps a little bit for knowing how far up to go. Don't know if that makes sense. Okay, <clears throat> trying that again. That looks better. And that'll leave me a little bit more room down below for doing Goat Lady. So I'm going to start in the middle and stamp out. Here's what I mean. This is gonna be the letter A, since A is the middle letter of the word crazy. So I'm going to slide this down right in the center of where I want my stamping to be until I feel the image catch on this tape. And then I'm gonna go ahead and strike it. And then lift it out and that looks great. So now I'm going to work to the right first. So I'm gonna make sure that I have the correct stamp. 
and I do, it says me. So on these Be Education stamps, I want this, whoops, I want this lettering right here to face me. So I'm gonna turn it like this. I'm going to figure out my spacing, how far I want it away from that A. And then I'm gonna stamp. Next, I'm going to do Y. So turning this to face me. Getting my spacing good. I messed up, oh well. So since you can see right here, let me show you. I didn't pull it down until I could feel it touching the tape. So it went all crazy right there which honestly, I'm gonna work with it because I feel like that is okay for the message of this piece. So what I'm gonna do now, since that Y is weird, I'm going to adapt my design and CR, I'm gonna make them all weird. So R, make sure I have the right stamp, make sure it's facing the right way. I'm gonna go ahead and Slide this down till it, it touches the tape and make sure that my spacing is good. Make sure my stamp is up straight and that the bottom side of this stamp here is parallel with the bottom of the blank. Okay. And now the C, I'm going to put it up high like I got that Y there. And then it will sort of follow the, the shape of the back of the, the goat, like a little smile. There we go. All right, now for the rest of it, I've gotta be more careful. I think it's acceptable for the part that says crazy to be stamped a little crazy. I hope you can see it. And I think that's okay. I like the way it follows the back of the goat, but I don't want that to happen with the rest of it. I think I'm gonna do lady before I do goat, and then I can, I'll show you why in a minute. All right, so uppercase L, the Mirando stamps are a little different than the Beducation stamps. You can see it's a two, four hexagon instead of a square, but they still have it marked which way the letter goes. So again, these markings need to face me. So I'm gonna hold that with my thumb, make sure everything looks good on the letter. And then again, I'm making sure that this, this side of the stamp is parallel to me and the bottom of the blank. All right, so we're gonna go A. These are small, the lowercase from this, so I don't need to hit as hard. When I do a Y, the, the tail of the Y here is going to hang down below where the tape is. So I just put it on top of the tape and I make sure that the upper portion of the Y is above the tape and the tail of the Y is below the tape. And I'm just sort of rolling it on here to make sure it's in the right spot. Okay, now I've got to think this through because this is taking up more space than I thought. So I'm going to do all lowercase for goats, or goat, I guess. All right, so same story with the G as with the Y. That little tail is going to hang below the tape and the upper part of the G is going to be above the tape. So, all right, let's move the tape here. 
I'm gonna have to kind of crowd the letters a little bit and it just is what it is, so. Wait a minute, I wanna see where this G is gonna hit. Okay, I can see that the best place for that G is going to be right under the leg of the A in crazy so that it doesn't crash into the A below. stamping. Let's see if it's legible since I had to crowd them a little bit. I think we're okay. All right now I'm going to go ahead and color that in. All right my sharpie oil-based paint pen is dead so I'm going to use just a regular old sharpie and I'm gonna go ahead and just color in really well here the impressions. I have to push on it a little bit on the pen to get the ink way down in there into those impressions. Since this is going to be on a keychain instead of a necklace, I'm going to give it more of a brushed finish instead of a polished finish. If I was to do a polished finish, it would get scratched up really quickly, banging around in someone's purse or against the other keys or whatever. So I like to do a brushed finish when it's on an item that is maybe going to be coming in contact with other stuff a lot so that scratches just don't really show up so much. So I'm gonna do that with quadruple aught steel wool. So zero, 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 zero steel wool. Let me grab that. Well, I am going to use my steel wool blob to remove the ink. So I'm just running this steel wool in the same direction, just back and forth, so that it's more planned looking. And I'm going to do that on the legs, on the head, all over this blank so that there aren't any spots that look like they don't belong with the piece. I'm going to get the back. All right, now of course I have all of these steel wool shavings, so I'm going to clean that up really quickly before we move on. I have a magnet that I'm just going to run along here. If I don't clean it up right away and I just move on, I'm going to end up getting steel wool slivers all over myself and that feels terrible. So I'm just getting that cleaned up. There we go. Set that to the side and then I'm going to punch a hole in the head to attach it to the key ring. So I rest this handle here, kind of against my belly and that frees up a hand to put the blank in here and then the other hand operates this. So it's gonna be hard to see. Let's see what we can do. So I just rest it against me until I have this positioned in here. pretty well but not doesn't need to be perfect just 
want to show you where that punch is sitting before I chomp it. Okay, and now two hands. I'm trying to see if I can get this in. There we go. And then that just slides through. When I open it up, you can see it sticks to that little peg. So I have some cushioning stuff painted on so that it doesn't leave a mark on my blank or on my piece, I guess. Then I'm just gonna pull it open and that'll pop off. All right. Gosh, we're learning all kinds of things today because look, do you see how it distorted? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a rawhide mallet or a nylon mallet to just flatten that back out. Let me grab that. Okay. So this is a rawhide mallet. These I think run about $20 unless you can find one that's used. I've tried to find them used and I can't find them. So this is from Tandy Leather, but you can get them on Amazon or whatever. I'll leave a link for that. And this is a nylon mallet that you can just get for like $3 at Harbor Freight. So either one of these will work great, but since this does have a rounded back and I want it to lay flat, I'm gonna go ahead and use my rawhide mallet. And this is pretty easy, you just sit it flat. I'm gonna hang on to it right here and then just kind of gently tap it a few times. Let's take a look. It's much better, but it's still a little distorted. So I'm going to use the small end of the nylon mallet to fix that. There we go. All better. All right, last thing is to attach it to my key ring. So I'm gonna use a small pair of pliers here. I'm going to put the key ring through this little pinch bale. So the way this works is this pinch bale has two little teeth. You can see them here maybe, I hope. And those teeth are going to pinch closed inside this hole on the head of the goat. So what I need to do, if I don't close this up a little bit in advance, then I'm really gonna have trouble keeping it in the hole. So I'm gonna Close this up just a little bit first, maybe, so that that gap is just about the size of the blank thickness. So our little goat slides right in there. Now I'm going to try and hold it all together. I'm going to do it down here so that I can rest it against my bench block. Stand up, goat. And then with my pliers, I'm just going to pinch it closed the rest of the way. There we go. It's all pinched closed. And now this guy is not going anywhere because it's held in place by two prongs. It just doesn't have the same stress points as you would find on a jump ring. I'm going to close that up just a little more. You can see the teeth aren't touching each other very well, so I just really want that closed on it. There we go, that's better. All right, all done. Here's our cute little goat keychain. And my next video is going to be about cutting this blank. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell so that you'll get notified when that video comes out. Hopefully I'll have it ready for you next week.